She's sane when she has to be in public. She's sane when she, her lover Marie is near. She was insane for murdering the love of her life, Pacifica, and destroying the future that she wished for is now crumbled up into a broken carcass. The only thing she has to live off of now is her regrets. Let's take a look to see how twisted and deranged Clymene really is as she looks back at her past regrets. Hey, baby pony. It's me, Moonlight Lily Moon. Um, uh, yes, I, I, I know. This is, I, I know people want lore of how Clymene actually grew up and how she became deranged, but I have to do that for another video. This might tie into it a little bit, but I just want to get this, you know, out there in the blue of how she became deranged. Well, how do I put this? Galaxy Rider and Luke Smith, just want to say a shout out to them. They have been, like, excellent with lore pickings and asking questions. And again, even though half the time I tell them this on X comment, why is so confusing of when I lead up for the answer to lore videos. Again, I'm not really good at this, but I'm trying my damn best, but shout out to those guys, they're amazing. So I decided to drop some little lore teasers about, I think I said on stream one time that Clymene basically has regrets of the past actions she did. She knows that she, you know, the things she did was stupid and wrong, but the thing is she has to, she has that more on life where it's like, you have to you know, grab every grapevine as best as you can. Okay, so what I mean by that, so if you have to, like, cut someone off <laughs> just to get what you gotta get done, then that's how she believes in. And that kind of made her a little bit more twisted. But there's multiple levels of twisted on how it all started out. Let me break this down for you. Again, topics might be all over the place with the lore because I never write it out, but I'm gonna start at the beginning. In the beginning, it wasn't all peaches and cream for Clymene. She was mostly bullied at a young age for her just being smart. And, well, you know how bullies are. They would bully you just because they see something they don't like about you. Believe me, I was bullied myself most of my middle school, so... But not talking about me. Most of Clymene, she was just called stupid things, and that just kind of drove her up the walls. And even though she went to people, they just never seemed to care, because Clymene was just smart like that. This was the first base of her insanity. And when Tragic struck on the Delphi clan, oh, believe me, Clymene knew of a cure. But she thought to herself, why the hell would she help out her own clan that treated her like, no, excuse me for cursing, treated her like shit for most of her, her days. Her parents treated her like shit, the, her freaking teacher treated her like shit, and her, the school treated her like shit. So she just thought of one thing, and was to let them all die due to the sickness. The sickness? Well, well, let's just say it was a sickness that could literally kill a whole species in just about a minute. Kind of like, not COVID, well I can't really say COVID because of, oh, you do demonetization, but it was kind of like a sickness like COVID that would literally just eat the cells alive that would destroy the genes of any sea-like creature. That's kind of like inkling as an octoling. I mean, yeah, it's probably been cured now and claiming knew about the cure and she made it herself, but hey, why not get revenge on your own race? But after they were gone, that kind of took a toll on her regrets. The second part of climbing sanity was her being alone. After her race basically disappeared, she was just had no one else to be there for her. And trust me, being alone can kind of hurts because you think you'll never have anyone in the world to trust. And pretty much you could have saved her own race that kind of made her, you know, crazy. And well, she was the last one. And before anyone asked, hold on. If you actually Google it, Clymene dolphins are actually almost about the extinct in the world. They are literally at to the point of endangerment. So you could basically say that was also how I made Clymene. But still, that kind of drove her up the walls to be alone. But then again, it's pretty much her fault and stupidity for doing that. But then again, I wouldn't blame her. She was bullied. But then again, it depends on how you take it. Now that Clymene's alone, there's nothing she can do about it. Until there was one person, though. Agent Zero, aka Pacifica, she needed help with a certain scientist. She just needed someone to help her out, make new gadgets for her, and just to keep her in check. And when she got wind that a certain, you know, a dolphin scientist was in town and was the best of the best from what she heard, she wanted to recruit her. And eventually, missions after missions after missions with helping out, they eventually started dating. And believe me, Clymene felt that Pacifica was the best thing that ever happened to her, and that kept her sanity at low. No matter how low it gets, no matter how happy you think it is, your regrets start eating you alive. 
after all these years, Climbing's been he dealing with it, of being alone, basically knowing the cure for her race and not doing a thing about it, and she was being the last one. And that was literally overboiling, and she didn't tell Pacifica about it. You never bubble in your emotions, and you never keep it a cap on it, because it will just explode. So what happened? Well, one idea came to mind. What if she could basically take some blood of Pacifica, who had ancient human genes, really rare between Inklings and Noctilings, of course, and she made her own gene, mixed it together, and she could bring back a stronger race. Maybe basically clone the Delphi clan back to its former glory. Even though, you know, she could have saved it. But then again, people of the Delphi clan were strong. But if she can just boost Agent Zero's genes, and with hers, make their own kind of like DNA children, they can end the war. And be the strongest and probably control it. And, well, I don't think Pacifica liked that idea when she proposed it to her. And even though that was the snapping point of Agent Zero saying no, Climbing just thought she just needed to die just to get what she needed. And she thought that was her dream. Her dream of ruling with Pacifica over an army over the world. Where everything is perfect, no wars, no stress, no fuss, nothing about it. Everyone's happy. But did that really make Claiming truly really happy though? Killing her own lover to get what she wanted? Or what she thought what they wanted? That question still pops in her mind every day. And she regrets it. All of it. But she can't regret anything now. She has to put her plans in motion. She got the blood of what she needed. She just gotta put forth it, her efforts, and make sure her dream stays alive. With enough blood for the cloning and help from a scientist named Siva, in order to achieve her dream, Climbing engineered and created her first clone based off of Pacifica's blood. This clone, known as H13, or as many of you all know her as, I see. And even though it was an experiment followed by SIVA, Icy may have neurogenal cloning, which was a little brain damage in the brain, which kind of set her brain to 12 year old mode, but she would grow up to be over 18 and 19, etc. Well, I mean, knew about this, but she said results are results, and it's gonna take a couple eggshells to crack in order to, you know, to get the answer she needs. But one thing she did not need, well, was. Finding out that Oceana broke in and took I C, the first ever experiment. Even though Oceana didn't know about Climbing's intentions at the time, she did hear from word that there was a cloning project going on, and Oceana needed to put a stop to it. Then, that's when Climbing literally said to herself, I need to kill Oceana and I C and get rid of any other members of Squid Beak's platoon. But hey, I know it's a little bit jumbled, but I still have to organize it, still working on the kinks, so all this doesn't have a script, so yeah. It's kind of funny how Oceana caught wind. She didn't know Climbing was there, it's just she caught wind of certain cloning experiments. She swooped in and then rescued I.C., which was had genes from her mother. I think Oceana never knew about her mom being gone, because I think they told her, hey, your mom's been gone for some years, and Oceana did school and all that stuff, but it's kind of weird. But thank god Oceana rescued I.C., but I think that was a tipping point where Climbing said, Oh shit, I forgot about the daughter. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. And as time goes by, I think I'm going to do Climbing's backstory on the Delphi clan and how strong they were. Because I know there's major clans in the Splatlands. You got the Onaga, the Megalo, which is Shiver, I think. And then you got Big Man's clan. But the Delphi clan is going to be something special, and I can't wait for that and how they all died of the race. But if you have any more lore questions, let me know. Well, I think the uh, next one I'm going to cover is Oceana growing up and the impact she had on Pacifica, because I know Oceana's dad was a deadbeat and just left her when Pacifica was pregnant. But hey, there's tons of lore questions. So Galaxy, Luke, thank you guys for always exploring the lore. It gives me more ideas. You might, guys can probably help me with it. As well as Manalo, he can help me with the lore too. But hey, we'll see as time goes. But if you like this video, please subscribe and like it. Remember, peace and love to the world, and I'll see you all my wildflowers in the future. Oh, oh, and one more thing, guys. If you ever want to support us, super thanks or anything, or support us on Patreon and become a channel member, and I'll see if I can start doing more lore parts and stuff. But yeah, peace out, little moons.